Do you ever feel like, what is even the point in doing the things that you need to do to achieve your goals or even just the little things that are on your to-do list that make up everyday life? Anthony Samroff from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com. This is episode 70 of the Be Yourself and Love It podcast. And this is the fight against powerlessness and lethargy. Now, I guess I've been thinking about this concept, the psychological implications. Why is it that we gain these patterns of ennui? I know I sound quite lethargic myself tonight. That's because it's 2 a.m. here in Scotland. But um, where do we get this feeling of powerlessness? Like there's no point in anything that we do and that it's such a struggle. Everything we want to do feels so heavy and such a burden upon us. And the thing is this emotional heaviness makes it harder to do the things we want to do. And I'm going to get quite personal here and talk about my experiences because in our life, we want to feel alive. We want to feel passionately engaged in what we're doing. And we often get the sense that if we didn't have this feeling of being burdened, there would be a good chance that we could do a lot of these things in a few minutes. In a few, why, why, are, why are we making mountains out of molehills? Now, I'm going to talk about my experience because I've been considering it in therapy, meditation, my journaling, and I've come to some realizations, and maybe some of them will be of relevance to you. You might need to reflect on your own experience and see if you can find the parallels. So... When I was growing up, um, there's a lot of conflict in my household between my mum and dad. I'd say that they argued every day and I was a lot of the time left to do my own thing. My dad was a good provider. My mum took care of all my material needs. If you've heard of the five love languages, Her primary love language is acts of service. So she would make my bed and she would bring me fruit while I was watching the television, but I spent way too much time watching the television. And the thing about my mum, the way that she's wired up, she was and is a very critical person. So she would constantly be finding fault with everything I do and everything that everyone did. And so even if I tried to do something helpful like Hoover, she'd be more likely to come in and correct me and say, well, you don't do it this way, you do it that way. And she always wanted to instruct me. And I got a feeling like, and not instruct me in a way that felt appealing you know, positive. I didn't feel like mentored by her. Um, So uh, many times I'd say set the table before dinner and she chide me angrily and aggressively uh, because I forgot the napkins or something like that. And of course, one time she made the table and forgot the napkins and I pointed it out and she just would get grumpy. You know, she's not the kind of person that if you point out that she's doing kind of things that she chides you for, takes that as feedback. But, you know, whenever me or my dad or a member of my family criticized her for any hypocrisy, it wasn't motivated by trying to point out flaws with her. It was actually motivated by, in the hope that she would stop criticizing us all the time. But, of course, it didn't work. So that is one way that I got the feeling of like, what's even the point? What's even the point in hoovering? What's the point in doing something to help? Because you might just get in trouble for helping. Now, 
more importantly than that for me, and I am going to get to how you can apply this to solving your own problems. You don't have to have had the same experiences as me to apply my method, the method that I have learned from introspection and I've been practicing. So another, another, a more important factor was what I was saying is, you know, you couldn't get her to see your position most of the time. So what's even the point? Now, <laughs> I, I did persist hard and long to try and get her to see my position, to explain myself, to, even if you argued, she'd always have an answer. Uh, if you, if, as a pair, as an individual, if you said, no, I don't want to do this or that, she wouldn't accept your boundaries and say, okay, that's okay then, you don't have to do you don't have to. She'd constantly grind and can and grind you down and keep on um, arguing the point. So you so from this, I inherited a feeling of what's the point. I drew the conclusion, what's the point? Now your experience might be completely different from mine, but here's the key point. I drew the conclusion, what's the point? And then I go and apply that to all of life. I had this prevailing feeling, what's even the point, which stopped me from persisting with projects or finishing anything, bothering to learn things. And part of that is because, you know, there was no really enlightened adults around me to receive my creativity. There's no one super curious in what I was doing. I very rarely, if ever, remember adults taking a genuine interest, just curiosity, not with the intention to instruct, just, hey, what you're up, what are you up to? Um, and in addition to that, you know, I remember later on, my dad would say sometimes, you always start things, but don't finish them. And, you know, that was kind of true, but it's not helpful. What a helpful adult would do is um, say, hey, how come you didn't finish that thing? What are the problems involved? Can I sit down and look at what you've done so far with you? Take real curiosity in that project and um, say, well, maybe you can talk to me about the bits that you're stuck on or your lack of motivation and see, see if I can help you finish or inspire you to finish those bits and then you'll, then you'll be able to progress. And that's how we learn as children to persist as adults actually, it's with having an external voice that we can then internalize. The same if you had a very critical parent like I did, there's a good chance that you have a very stern, uh, relentless inner critic because we internalize the voices of the adults around us as children. So you need people to guide you through difficulties when you're a child in order to internalize that. And if you don't have that, then you have to develop it yourself as an adult, sadly, or go out and get some mentorship, get some therapy. I've done tons of therapy and it's really, really helped me. As you probably know, I'm a therapist. If you think that you might want to work with me, you can send me a message on Facebook or email me at Anthony at beyourselfandlover.com. Now, I want to come back to this idea. I internalized the idea, what is the point? Now, that is my important statement. I did it. I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't do it consciously, but I did it. There is your power. I did this to myself. Therefore, I can undo it. This is not a victim story that I'm giving you. It's to apply. As soon as you realize, I did it, even though it's unconscious, you're not chiding yourself, then you can undo it. So, there's my power. Now, I was going through my past in therapy and thinking, hey, 
yeah, there was a lot of arguing in the house, but I didn't have to stay in the house. I could have come home after school. I could have gone to a friend's house after school every single day instead of watching TV for three hours, which is what I usually did because I didn't want to do my homework. I could have gone out to the park and done my homework under a tree. I could have made a point of going to friends' houses after school, coming back to have dinner, then going out again to do something. You know, I could have read books under a tree. I subjected myself unnecessarily to what was a toxic environment. Now, you might say, well, Anthony, you didn't know better, such and so and so, and that's all true. <laughs> you know, I didn't know, if I'd known better, I probably would have done better. No one suggested it to me. No one said to me, hey, you know, there's no point in arguing with your mum. If you're wise, you'll never try to convince her of anything. Maybe if someone wise had said that to me, I wouldn't have tried to convince her of anything. But the point remains that I did it. Why is this important to overcoming the feeling of powerlessness? Because the more you look back on your past and all the things that happened to you that you didn't want to happen to you, all the bad things that you were subjected to, and think, what was my role in the situation? What was my role in creating the situation? What could I have done instead? And when you do this, you should really tune into the feelings that you have associated with these events so that this does not remain merely a mental exercise. You really need to get in touch with your parts, the parts that feel this way and their sad emotions. And then think about what you could have done to not be there, to make, make better choices for yourself. This is reconditioning you not to be a victim. Choice is the enemy of the victim, I have heard it said. And you need to look back on that and think, what were my other choices? Because it's only through realizing that you had other choices that you will begin to realize that this is a deep-rooted pattern, an emotional pattern of casting yourself as the victim, which you may as well may well have been in many in many ways but that you still had choice and when you realize that you had choice then that is the beginning of realizing that you do have choice now and the feeling that you don't have a choice that you're bashing your head against a brick wall is only that it's only a feeling carried over from the past so my exercise to you is to think back on the times when you felt powerless in your life, in your childhood especially. Feel the feelings that are associated with those events, with that powerlessness, and start to think, what, are you, what were your other options? And this is not about chiding yourself, of course. This is saying, well, all right, well, if I'd done this, then that would have happened. So I could have done that, or I could have done that, this, this other thing, and that would have been better for me. And not get upset about should have, could have, would have, but just very pragmatically think what you could have done to not be a victim and to minimize your, your, sub, your exposure to negative influences. And spend some time with this. And get back to me with a comment on, in fact, it would be really great if you left a comment saying some of your experiences. I'd love to read them of powerlessness. And then saying what you could have done. What were, you, what were the choices? Even if you didn't know those choices at the time, as I said, just to be aware of what those choices were. And that will start to recondition your mind not just your relationship to the past, but your relationship to the presence, present and help you reclaim your power. Hope to see your comments. If you're listening to this on the podcast edition, which most people do, you can go on YouTube to leave the comment.
And if you want some help with this, of course, I should probably say, get in touch because I'd love to help you. Until next time, be yourself. But don't just be yourself. Be yourself and love it.